Guys, what's up? Before we get into this epic episode, one of my favorites, I think I had the most fun on that episode I've ever had. Here's my live dates where you can come see me live. Coming up, Poughkeepsie, New York, July 21st and 22nd. Get those tickets. Then Jordan Landing, Utah, August 4th and 5th. The Paramount Theater in Long Island. Most of the tickets are gone. Get the rest. Huntington, Long Island, August 17th. Dallas, Texas, August 24th through the 26th. Uh, Springfield, Missouri, September 7th and 9th. Calgary, Alberta, September 22nd and 23rd. Uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana, September 29th and 30th. Red Bank, New Jersey at the Vogel uh, Theater, October 14th. Cobbs in San Francisco. That's a big room, so I need you guys to tell all your friends, get tickets. October 27th, 28th, I'm in San Francisco at Cobbs. New York, Sony Hall, New York City, my hometown. Uh, get those tickets November 4th. Providence, November 10th and 11th. Phoenix, November 16th and 17th. Spokane, Washington, December 1st and 2nd. And Tulsa Comedy Club, December 8th and 9th. Louisville, December 15th and 16th. And the Royal Theater in Toronto, March 23rd. Now enjoy this fabulous, fabulous episode about... Uh, trying to lasso the poos poos and a dysregulated nervous system and how it happens. What's up, everybody? Welcome to a brand new, all new Giannis Pappas Hour. You know what it is. Every episode's the first episode till the numbers get bigger. So if you tune in, we'll just keep doing episode one. So if any new people keep tuning in, they'll just go, oh, this podcast just started. It's doing great for just starting. I don't know why the numbers are going down. Obviously, obviously, uh, I just got off a red eye from L.A., so I slept, but I got the Delta one, so I got the bed, and it was nice. I slept through the whole thing, but I missed dinner, so it was, I was trying to stay awake to get the meatballs that I ordered, <laughs> so it was, I was torn because the flight was 12, and I was like, I want to stay up and at least eat the meatballs and go to sleep, but they were taking too goddamn long. They were dragging ass. Airline meatballs? Yeah. Dude. No, it's not like it used to be. Really? The meals are good. And um, so I just went to bed and I slept. Um, but we will keep making this episode one because YouTube <laughs> is just dinging us. The Joe DeRosa episode got dinged, maybe because we talked about an adult topic. That makes sense. I understand. I think maybe we mentioned either Kurt Cobain or something. Yeah, beep it. <laughs> Unaliving, they call it now. And they say that that word helps kids. Oh, that helps kids? Yeah. So I don't, I don't know if we should be talking about this in the beginning, but yeah, they, that's the new word. That's the politically correct word to describe it. I don't know. How about you just go after these social media companies who are making these kids feel bad of yourselves? We got to shut down the internet. That's it. I want this. I want the gatekeepers back. I want to be kicked out of the business. I want to save all the kids. I understand that I have a career because of the internet, but I want to close it. I want to close this shop like Nordstrom's. It's got to be done. Go have a going out of business sale. All podcasts half off. And let's get out of here. Well, the podcasts aren't the one that are dysregulating, which is funny because we get dinged for saying certain words. But we're not out there photoshopping our jokes. Nobody's photoshopping their joke and putting filters over their jokes and making kids feel bad. But you know who are? Influencers who... Who, who have learned how to airbrush their bodies and make girls feel bad. And guys have to watch TikTokers without their shirts off uh, <laughs> dancing, making them feel bad. Because most kids just have an American diet of Cheetos, 7-Eleven, and garbage, <laughs> and fucking In-N-Out burgers. Their fries are horrible, by the way. In-N-Out burgers are gross. They taste like cardboard. There's no salt on them. They're not even cooked all the way. They're raw potato skins thins in and out burger fries suck but yeah kids are fucking it dysregulates your nervous system you sign on to social media you start scrolling around and i think that's what me and joey talked about me and joe DeRosa, me and joey d who i said does a little with a lot <laughs> no he does a lot with a little is what I said. So that episode, uh, yeah, you have to sign in to watch it. You have to, YouTube wants to know that you're an adult. So, and here's the thing, I kind of understand. Is there just a place where we could do 18 and over comedy and just say stuff? 
Elon Musk, you're going to have to pivot, dog. You're going to have to pivot because let's just say Zuckerberg's a little younger. He's a little more jacked. He's training with actual champions. And he trolled your heart. He trolled your heart. You know, he created threads. And he stole, he stole all the libs who you pissed <laughs> off. <laughs> we live in a comic book where these billionaire playboys, these billionaire, you know, guys are now going to MMA fight each other. <laughs> it's getting cartoonish a little bit. I need glasses. Hold on. Pause it. Dude, he looks jacked. Yeah, I mean, Mark Zuckerberg looks jacked. He's younger than Elon Musk. And right before the fight, he just stole a lot of people yeah. from Twitter. People who were felt like they had no choice. <laughs> they felt like they had no choice. And Joe DeRosa made excellent points about that. It's like going from the, he said his line is, it's like going from the beach in Jaws 1 to go to the beach in Jaws 2. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Mark Zuckerberg, I, he was controversial before, right? Wasn't he letting all types of disinformation fly before the election as long as you paid? Yeah. And he's like, I, I guess we didn't know what was going on. I mean, we were collecting the money. We just didn't, we didn't really, we weren't looking into it. You know, we weren't looking into troll farms in Brazil and, <laughs> and uh, Romania. We just didn't know. We just didn't know that the Black Lives Matter fan page was uh, a Russian troll. We had no clue. Most people still don't know that. Most people still don't know that alarming fact that the biggest Black Lives Matter page was not Black Lives Matter, <laughs> which is real funny, which is really, really funny that that's a buried story, but these two guys doing an MMA fight is what the headline is because there's just no more adults left on the planet, and why would there be? We're coddled like kids. Why would you grow up? It's like when I look at my daughter... And I see why she doesn't want to potty train. It's like, why would she want to stop being treated like Mariah Carey? Where she can just spread her arms and then she's attended to. She pees herself. The freedom to pee yourself and then have adults just tend to you. Why would she grow up? Why would anyone? Why would any of us do it? Why would we inconvenience ourselves by having kids, becoming adults, dealing with the world when you don't have to anymore? Yes, so this is on CNN, so you know it's the truth. <laughs> the biggest Black Lives Matter page on Facebook is fake. This is from 2000. This wasn't that long ago. This was 2018. For at least a year, the biggest page on Facebook. Okay, the biggest page on Facebook, meaning the Black Lives Matter page. <laughs> Which camera, there? Yeah. The Black Lives Matter page. Um, was a scam. With this, this is their words. With ties to a middle-aged white man in Australia, a review of the page and associated accounts and websites conducted by CNN shows. The, the page, titled simply Black Lives Matter, had 700,000 followers on Facebook, more than twice as many as the official Black Lives Matter page. Okay, because I guess there was one. Um, it was tied to online fundraisers that brought in around 100,000 that supposedly went to Black Lives Matter causes in the U.S., at least some of the money, however, was transferred to Australian bank accounts. <laughs> so maybe this was a guy, maybe this was a front for some intelligence agency wanting to cause dysregulation. Who knows? They're out, they were out there. I mean, I remember the, the edited video of the, the, uh, the guy screaming in the, um, the kid, the, 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 the old man, old Indian screaming at that oh, yeah. Yeah, kid yeah. with the hat. Mm -hmm. That was uh, some... That was out of South America, some uh, content creator of South America. I mean, you know, Russia was definitely looking to dysregulate our nervous system. I think that's still, I think that's why a lot of people have dysregulated nervous systems right now, is because that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to dysregulate the population's nervous system, get people all frantic and worked up, and going, "What's going on? How do I get famous? <laughs> What's going on? What's going on? Oh my God, my attention spans eight seconds. Everyone's just dysregulated." You know, nobody's just, like, at peace, you know? You got to, like, in order to cure yourself of American chaos, you have to go You have to go to rehab in a Catholic <laughs> monastery. You really do, to regulate your nervous system? Yeah, become a monk. I mean, dude, you know what kids are doing? Kids are just scrolling, dude. They're scrolling. And all they're looking at is stuff that makes them feel bad. Nothing makes them feel good, you know? They're looking at stuff that, like, you know, puts pressure on them to... to to learn how to become an influencer and make money now. 
while you're hot and young, when you get older, what are you? What are older people doing in this country? <laughs> when has there been a story? Where are older people visible? Nobody's watching. Where are they? It's reality TV. It's TikTok. It's Instagram. Where do 40 people, 40 year old people chill at? Where can you see images of 40 and 50 year old people telling kids stuff? <laughs> it's like kids telling kids shit. It's kids raising kids. It's nuts. There's no more teenage mom, but they're like, everyone's like fucking these wandering, atheistic, consuming, you know, uh, adolescents living in extended youth, kind of like coaching each other <laughs> at Coachella. What to wear? How much water to bring? How much fucking Molly to take? How to recover? <laughs> How to filter, what kind of content people are into. You follow me, I follow you. It's a circle jerk the same way Miami's a circle jerk in that everyone's a party promoter. It's like everyone's got like a, you know, a fucking vegan uh, nutritionist page. Or let me curate, let me show you my travel blog. Travel blog. Everyone is, you know, everyone's just creating content and becoming... Uh, excellent marketers. The new thing, though, is that Hollywood has been brought to its knees by these tech companies, which is wild. Because, look, it's not just like, it's not like this, like, oh, it's just, you know, the unintentional consequences of a free market. It's like intentional manipulation by tech companies to addict you. They have a product that, like, you know, addicts you like cigarettes. It chemically gets you locked in. And so Hollywood patience. Let's just, not only has Hollywood been dysregulated, this is this just nervous system of everything. Institutions have been dysregulated, right? Not only has Hollywood as an institution been dysregulated and they're in this strike and the studios are going like, we can't pay you because we won't make any <laughs> fucking money because everyone's watching fucking, you know, Matt Rife, take his shirt off, <laughs> which is fine, which is great. But I mean, let's just say what it is. They, they're not making any money, right? I don't even think these blockbusters are going to be making as much money as they did because people can't even, I don't even think the kids can pay attention long enough, you know, to Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. They're like, <laughs> okay, is there a fucking abridged version of this that I can get in a minute clip? What they've dysregulated is patience. That's what they've dysregulated. Nobody has any patience. Nobody's waiting around for the payoff. You know, it's like, it's up front. It's front of the house entertainment, <laughs> you know, with no payoff. It's like, a, it's like you, if you, you got to get, the conclusion has to be the premise. There's no premise, build, reveal, conclusion. Live is fine. That's where everyone heals. I know this as a comedian because live has never been better. And I think that's why comedians are selling so many tickets. This is the biggest boom in live comedy that has ever existed in the humanity, in the history of humanity. Really? And that is not an overstatement. That is not hyperbole, <laughs> which Sebastian Maniscalco made fun of me for saying innocuous. <laughs> I go, so, so guys, my God. I'm like, look, you got a billion dollars, guy. Maybe it's time to pick up a thesaurus because you're going to be around. You're not going to be around your old pals in Chicago anymore. You're going to be meeting people with last names like Wasserman uh -huh. and, you know, Zeisenzong. <laughs> and these guys went to Harvard and Yale and Cambridge. And maybe you want to know what the word innocuous means because you're not a kid from fucking Chicago anymore. <laughs> I was like, these guys just use a big word. <laughs> Greatest guy in the world. I want to become friends with him. He yeah. drinks wife. He, like, you know, they're older. They got kids. Yeah. They don't do drugs. You know, that's me. Drinking wine, hanging out, making jokes. Yeah, yeah. You know, talking about the wife and kids and shit. He had you over for dinner? No, I did his pod. Did which, his pod. And by the way, Pete Corielli is the greatest guy. They're both just great. I had a great time. And um, Two gindaloons. Uh, they... they Shut the fuck up, you dumb bitch. I know you're listening to everything. Fuck you, Zuckerberg. Fuck you, Ze Bezos. Fuck you, Apple. Fuck you, Tim Cook. <laughs> fuck you, Elon Musk. Um, yeah, I did their pod. Pete Cordielli, also a great guy. They got a podcast, eh? you know, Pete and Sebastian's show. And um, so I went over there. It was great. And um, 
But yeah, I got I got on a sidetrack from that. What was I talking about before? Yeah, they've dysregulated everything. So everyone's dysregulated, you know? So yeah, the entertainment, I was saying, yeah, because I think that the, there's like, the conclusion is the premise, you know? Pretty soon pe- people, are, it's, it's basically just like, you're going to have to, there's going to have to be a bleeding, a bleeding model. There's going to be a fashion show with bleeding models. They're going to go out and they're just going to stab them like that as they go out so they can go out bleeding. So you can just, they'll be, because they'll be research. They'll do market research that knows that appeals to your lower amygdala or whatever. Because that's how creepy this shit is getting because they use all this like modern research of brain scans and stuff to know what hooks people, you know? And it's like, like a rock. (laughs) Like, what? what's going on? Why am I feeling maudlin? It's just a Ford commercial. <laughs> but they've gone even farther now. Where like they just everything is data sized. I don't know if that's a word, but like they know exactly to the point where like the lowest common denominator of attention trails off. And so they go, let's make content that can fill and it just gets less and less and less and less and less time. And essentially it was really the TikTok a, a TikTokization. That changed it. That just took over the internet. Suggested reels. You're no longer getting the things you want to see. You're getting suggestions, right? So that uh, you you go, oh well, that opens up. That it opens up for anyone to blow up, right? Mm-hmm. As opposed to the way it was before. It was like somebody saw it, got excited about how good it was, and so the people were actually curating. There was a period on the internet where the people were actually curating. By word of mouth, the way like my big frat Greek wedding got big. You're talking Which, about going viral. Going viral used to be share it. You'd share mm. it on another platform. They People would keep sharing it, um, and then the algorithm would see the movement. Now the algorithm goes by how long someone watched it, and then they'll suggest it to people who didn't ask for it. So they're essentially now providing entertainment the same way television used to provide an ent- entertainment in that they're putting it in front of you without you asking. I don't know how many accounts come in front of me that I did not ask for. Twitter has a for you feed. None of those people I follow. You watch one street fight video on that feed, (laughs) then your whole thing is just violence. Uh And of course you get locked in because it's that car crash phenomenon. And sometimes you go on Twitter and it just automatically puts you in the for you feed. And you don't want to be there. And you start scrolling and you're in the for you and you watch one fucking (laughs) fight video and your nervous system is dysregulated. But it's giving you what you like. See, that's the problem. It's given, but it's, sometimes it's not because it doesn't understand context. You know, sometimes I want to watch a, a a video because I hate someone, and you're checking in. <laughs> right. You're checking yeah. in on a hate. I don't want to watch it again. Yeah, but sometimes you, you just want to see something once. There was a golden era of the internet when it was pure. Like all things, humans ruin it. We are here to ruin it. <laughs> We're here to ruin. We don't think about it. We and it's part of our nature. I'm not even criticizing it. You know, you look at animals and stuff like that. They're not smart enough to evolve past what they are. So they, by no virtue, there's no virtue in them living in symbiotic harmony with the environment. You know, homo homeostasis or whatever it's called. Who? who I'm sorry, Sebastian. I'm st- <laughs> see, Sebastian. I'm stupid too homeostasis, right? Uh-huh. You know, this constant, you know, balance, right? It's There's no virtue. When people go, the humans are bad, it's like, we're not bad. We're serving our nature. We survive by using our fucking brain. You want us to turn that off once we got to a certain level? <laughs> once we invented the wheel or hopped on a horse, you want us to go stop? It doesn't stop there. You know, chimpanzees and all these other lower life forms, they can't keep going. Nobody. So, of course, they're good for the environment because they can't figure out air conditioning. <laughs> they didn't know how to fucking manipulate oil. They couldn't figure it out because their brains are small, like women. <laughs> so no, Our I, problem is we know better. That's the problem. No, but here's the thing. We know better. But See, well, Once you've achieved consciousness, now yeah. you know. You know what's right from wrong. Yeah, but you still need to fucking cool the air. You still know that you need to cool the air That's because comfort. your balls are sweating. That's comfort. Yeah, it's comfort. But what are you gonna? You, are you gonna stop? Are you gonna not do it <laughs> when you figure it out? Then you gotta f- keep figuring out ways to fi- deal with the consequences, and it's never ending until the planet explodes. I know the point you're making, and I'm enlightening you to my point. No, we're here to <laughs> destroy it. 
There's no like fucking balance. There's no like, oh, I went and lived in a monastery and I'm fine. There's no like, <laughs> oh, I'm I'm happy with what I have and I don't want to. That's called depression. You're in a state of depression. There's no way to escape the misery and suffering of being a human. And there's no way to escape the up and down, the thrills. You know, there's no way to es- escape the need to achieve competition, jealousy. I mean, who wants, uh, without these things, with a big brain, you're living in a state of absolute mundane repetition and boredom. You're living in boredom. You're living like an animal. What's the fucking point? What's the point then? What's the point to have a big brain and just live like a fucking chimp and be like, I'm cool with anything as long as I can eat, as long as I can drink, as long as things are here. So then what's the fucking point? Well, we traded barbarism for boredom. See, without that, you have barbarism. But then when the boredom hit, we said, now now it's time to tattoo our face. And I agree. It's time to tattoo your face and cut yourself and stab the models on the way out to the fashion show. Stab them like that. So that'll hold. Who's not tuning into that fashion show? Just like, I mean, look, if I put a fashion show where the models get stabbed, they all live, but they do bleed. <laughs> and we have a doctor on call to stitch them up as soon as they get back. Stab them with forks. Like Just, a, no, not a fork, a nice butter knife. Like stab. Butter knife, yeah. yeah, I want to see consistent blood flow because that's part of the fashion. Mm-hmm. You go out and the white dress gets, it's live blood. So that's part of the fashion. You are in a dark place. No, it's a it's part of the fashion. It's blood. We're trying to get people's attention here, and that goes up against the pay per view of of two fucking egghead nerd billionaires doing MMA fighting. I don't care how many moves they can they can they can they learn. I will headbutt either one of them in their dicks and win. Dude, Zuckerberg looks. I don't know. He looks pretty good. Yeah, and he's learning some moves, but he's an egghead nerd, and nobody wants to see this stupid fight. And if I put my bleeding fashion show up against it, <laughs> I guarantee you people will watch. My point is that's what we're going to have to do to compete with the eyeballs of two fucking billionaires fighting an MMA cage match. I mean, does anyone have any decorum? What happened to the decorum? What happened to someone going, that's beneath me? You know, Elon Musk was on Twitter going, Zuck is a cock. You're going, that's a conversation for you and Rogan over wine. <laughs> that's not a public statement. For the world's richest man who's got companies and shareholders and customers who have different beliefs. Like, leave that to me, dog. (laughs) What has happened in the world? Everyone wants a piece of the fucking attention. But without the charisma. Without the charisma, it's just you're just you're just you're just causing dysregulation of nervous systems. You know, because you own a Tesla and then you open up your Twitter and you just see Zuck is a cuck. And you're going, guy. And then you see, you see the blue check mark, and you're going, that's the official Twitter of Elon Musk. So, um, uh, so what do we have here? Twitter revenue. He's hiding his what's going on because he's losing money. I mean, he's bleeding. <laughs> he's paying people now. He's paying what? Yeah, but nobody. Everyone's leaving it. I so what's know. he doing? He's giving people for their content. Yeah. How's he going to do that? I don't know, but people are getting paid. Look at this dude. Got twenty four thousand dollars for what a tweet? Okay, so tweet anti Trump commentator Ed Cranston. <laughs> now this just incentivizes these guys to make content. There's no winning here, man. There's no winning. This guy's an anti Trump. So what? When Trump goes away, he's going to keep doing anti Trump stuff because it's his bread and butter, right? And that's what dysregulates all of our nervous systems. Ed Krasenstein who followed up with a screenshot of 24877 that he said had been deposited into his account. He has a twin brother, whatever his name is, who cares, who's also a political commentator. Oh, Jesus Christ. They're like the Cavender twins, these college basketball twins who are hot, except they just like fucking, they're twins who do <laughs> political commentary. I would love to see a date between those two set of twins, the Cavender twins and the Krasenstein twins. And they're like, Cavender twins are like, in their dresses, and the 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 Krasenstein twins are like just saying anti-Trump things in unison, finishing each other's sentences. Trump is a narcissist. <laughs> we finish each other's sentences, so they receive money. He promised he uh, he would start ad revenue. Blah blah blah. 
Uh, I don't know. So how, how's it, here's how it works. Twitter shares an undisclosed percentage of the ad revenue it gets from from replies to people's tweets directly to the user. I don't understand. So the more people reply to a user's tweets and ads, and those replies get viewed. Oh, so because the, then they'll put the ad in the replies. Yeah, it's a it's profit share. The more like money YouTube. you'll get from now, the only users getting paid are ones who meet specific criteria. They must be a verified user. They pay for a blue check mark. Uh, or have they been gifted one like LeBron James was? They have 5 million impressions or views on posts in each of the last three months and have a Stripe account linked to their Twitter account. All right, I'm going to look into that. <laughs> but listen, I get revenue sharing on all this shit. The only money that really comes in is patreon.com slash Giannis Pappas Hour. Join for the weekly bonus episodes. Don't just support the show like a freeloading fucking teenager living in his mom's house. Okay, pay rent here. Support it. You, if you're enjoying this content, pay for it because that's what makes it thrive. And it also gets me new Snickers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So pay. And the, uh, the episodes are awesome. Go check them out. You don't have to stay. There's no pressure. But you should. You should support. You should support the things you like. That's all there's going to be is all these independent creators, you know. I heard Shane's moving to Austin. He wants to create his own studio. People are creating their own studios. They're yeah. shooting their own content. That's what people are doing. Now with the strike. This could yeah, be especially good. with the strike. But even without it, like, just people go to people's YouTube pages or these tech. You know, Hollywood is done. This is the coup de grace. It's over, man. It's done. Like, people are going to start making their own shit. They already have been. But now people are realizing, oh, there's, like Yanni said years ago, there's nothing to get, only something to build. And it was a great line, and I was right years ago, and I'm right now. And I have been, and so many people have benefited from my prescient wisdom. Um, there's no evidence that I'm bipolar, right? <laughs> <laughs> bipolar is a tough one to have, dude. That's tough. You get, yeah. I was reading about Brody Stevens, a comedian who had oh, bipolarity, yeah. and he was like on the street swinging a bat, and then he was like saying he's Napoleon or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's real bipolarity, right? Then you get really low, too. Yeah, then you get real depressed. Mm -hmm. So you go like, I'm Napoleon, or then you go like, I'm the sh worst shit in the world. You, so it's like, my dad wasn't really bipolar then. No. He took a little lithium, but he never was like, I'm Napoleon. Plus, that guy saw some shit. He Korea. saw some shit. And yeah. He, he, I think he was more... Tr I think you always have to go to trauma first. Now yeah. we're going to get dinged because we're talking about mental health. But, you know, it's like, that's the... You have to go to trauma first. Mm -hmm. so my dad took a little lithium or whatever. He wasn't... But he wasn't like... I, you know, I think when you go high, that's a real situation. Yeah. And probably that's caused by trauma, too. You know? Could be. Sometimes yeah. the wiring is just fucked. Sometimes the wiring is uh, is a little off, but yeah, um, it's sad when that happens, you know. And also, you got to be careful when you play around with those drugs, man. Especially like hallucinogenic stuff. Yeah, that could trigger stuff. Even weed sometimes weed. for people. It's one of my biggest regrets. It's all the weed I smoked. Why? Because it, it like it's my memories for shit. You yeah. know, it's it just, doesn't do much. But it's just and we the, smoked low quality. It was the consistency though. It was like every day from the time I was twelve to twenty, I smoked. I got high. Yeah, me too. It was just like yeah, that stuff. Al alcohol. You can't. You got to do everything in moderation. If you're not, you got a dysregulated nervous system. It's what it is. Where are you getting this? What is? Because that's what it. Is. That's what it's really all about. Are you coining this new phrase? No, it's it's out there. It it's is. a dysregulated nervous system, and that's what it is. Trauma causes a dysregulated nervous system. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it, this regulated nervous system is when you feel like unsafe, you know, when your subconscious, when these evolutionary, uh, parts of your brain are reacting to the modern world, you know, we haven't figured out how to, how to, uh, live in harmony with that, with the, with those instincts. We haven't figured out how to, sometimes it's not, you can't logic with it. You know, it's like you're dysregulated. Mm -hmm. You know, if your mom is a, if your if your mom ends up being a hoe on Instagram, because this is the future. This is not the world we know. My daughter's like if my mom if, if my daughter's mom was like an Instagram hoe, uh -huh. she's gonna have a dysregulated <laughs> nervous system. You know, if you get two weeks off from maternity leave, you're gonna have some level of a dysregulated nervous system, which. Make no mistake, serves the pharmaceutical industry just fine. Oh, yeah, they got a pill for that. Oh, they got a pill for whatever. But at the end of the day, we haven't figured out how to, okay, okay, go, okay. We have we figured this all out. Now, how do we look at the old world and see how they naturally solved 
some of these problems. And by problems, I mean these survival instincts from when we were hunter-gatherers that we brought with us into modern society. How do we reconcile those two and, and make harmony and peace between those two? Because it's, there's not. There's not, you know? And what I mean by that is like, okay, someone has a baby. Is two weeks enough? No, that's not right. Women usually are used to, before we became civilized, you know, and women were living in tribes, women would raise the baby together. There'd be a lot of women around. If the mother's breast didn't produce milk or the kid didn't latch, that's what a wet nurse was for. There would be another woman who would breastfeed your kid or else the kid would die. So that's, my, that's an example of something that's in our brain, that's in our fucking brain, that's probably in women's brain, that then they're just alone. <laughs> then they're like, there's no women around. God forbid their mother-in-law is a fucking Instagram hoe. <laughs> and she's out in L.A. trying to cash in on her fucking, on her Twitch account or her TikTok. And you're all alone. Your mother's just alone. She's just sitting there alone. It's the fucking dad's, uh, you know, on the road. And she's just alone trying to, you know, and that, and there, and she's going to feel dysregulation. And she's not going to know why. But it's because of that, like, that alarm bell in the in the lower brain, the instinct brain, the survival brain, going, you're not safe, you're not so... When you kind of are, you have formula, and, but it's going off because we haven't figured out a empathetic environment um, when considering the, the subconscious. We have a sub... Dude, when you dream, that's subconscious. <laughs> you know? I had a dream the other night um, that I was like late to a gig and I was like, I was all like oh, anxious. Yeah. I couldn't get to a gig. One of those anxiety dreams. Yeah, and it's like yeah. that dream is about, that's my subconscious going like, yeah, yeah. you have this fear, you're too late to life, you're too <laughs> late, you're not going to make it. You know, that's, a, you're, you, why do we dream in metaphors? Seal nailed everything. <laughs> seal, seal, seal the, seal the singer nailed everything and the yeah. cosmic joke that this, 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 that this world is uh -huh. is that most people don't know that the true secrets are in Seal's albums. <laughs> Maybe you are getting a little uh, bipolar. <laughs> yeah, he goes, why do we dream in metaphors? Dream in metaphors. You know that line? Uh, why do we dream no. in metaphors? You're like, yeah, we do dream in metaphors. And then he goes, it's the loneliness that's the killer. <laughs> I can't remember which song. But you show me somebody who can survive mentally survive solitary confinement. Yeah. And all mental illnesses have an asocial component. So I worked with, you know, mentally ill people. Every one of them has an asocial component. So if you're if you're not social, you lose it. I think you lose your mind. Yeah. You know? So and also if you huff paint, that's not good either. <laughs> yeah, that can't help. <laughs> Did you just watch a Jonah Hill documentary or something? No, Jonah Hill. Why is that in the news that his fucking whore of an ex-wife threw some stupid texts out? I don't know. What kind of that. shit is that? What kind of like revenge porn? The the fuck the news. <laughs> Who fucking publishes that shit? Why make a fucking story out of that dumb, stupid fucking thing? We're on the verge of fucking World War II. You think I fucking give a shit? Three, thank you. <laughs> I just got off a red eye. Look at this dumb bitch. Jonah Hill, talk about doing a lot with a little. He puts Joe DeRosa to shame. Yeah, he's doing good. Because here's the thing about Joe DeRosa. When, when you walk with him, too, he walks like he's got this unathletic <laughs> kind of gimpy walk. You just want to uh -huh. kick his pencil legs out from under him and just beat his Tom Hanks-looking face into a pulp. You know, with his little skinny arms yeah. and his double chin. <laughs> you just want to fucking stomp him out. And see, that's the like lower part of your brain where you're yeah. going, I'm an alpha, I got to kill the weak one. <laughs> <laughs> with his dumb tattoos that look like they should be on a biker, not a fucking poet. <laughs> the kid could talk, though. Oh, no, Joe's the Rose is great. I'm He's joking. A good talker. I'm just joking. And then you look at Jonah Hill, who's, who's a fat... His jeans are unathletic. He's slow. His leg, he probably walks with his knees knocked like that. He's probably got loose skin hanging off. And you just want to stomp him in his chest and his head. And But you see what he did with it. See, like this. this is motivation. Yeah. He's not a good-looking guy. He's lucky to have his hair. That's good hair. You know, but he's not a good-looking guy. He's fat. He's got fat jeans. You know, he's, his, his lineage has been fat. Fucking pencil pushers for a long time. Oh, you definitely didn't watch this documentary because this is very hurtful to him, what you're doing right now.
No, I did watch his documentary, and you know you need to accept it, you, and you also need to accept my job and the truth. If I need to accept the fact that my the gravity's pulling my face into the, my nose, you have to accept the fact that you have a fat, fat, jeaned body. You had no athleticism in your lineage, and it is what it is. Your whole, all your ancestors were figuring out a way to manipulate people into giving them money so you could provide a service. You're a service. <laughs> You're a mercenary. Uh oh. <laughs> What's wrong with that? They use their brains because they had to. I've already admitted that. I get it. But look, this stuff gets in the genes. It's like that Bill Byrd joke when they go, uh, the white guy, <laughs> they go, they go, the white guy, uh, he's like, oh, that was a smart pass. And then the black guy just fucking flies through the air, dunks in the air, he goes, yeah, geez, how come I didn't think of that? <laughs> Jeez, that guy's, uh, it's, it's, I go, I'm a smart player. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> it's like, you know, certain things get in the genes. It mm. is what it is, you know? And Jonah Hill, there was no athletes in Jonah Hill's lineage. What do you want to tell me? There was a lot of guys <laughs> sitting, they were sitting behind, a lot of guys were sitting behind counters <laughs> in whatever European country he's from. You know, they were doing business. What, you know, it is what it is. So Jonah Hill is, should be an inspiration to a lot of people who are not born with a lot, that you can do a lot with a little. You really can. And that's the beautiful thing about being human. You can do a lot with a little. You can, dress, mm -hmm. you can really dress up a pig. <laughs> you know, and look at his hot wife. Yeah. And, you know, and this bitch has dysregulated his fucking nervous system. <laughs> he wakes up and he gets it. Uh, everyone knows the text that he sent, which was completely appropriate. If you would have seen some of the texts I've sent some of my ex-girlfriends, <laughs> some of the sluts I dated. Just kidding. But, yeah, I mean, he's like, hey, uh, she's posing with her bathing suit or whatever. And he said, I just want to let you know my boundaries. You know? Pull up the tweet that Jonah Hill here we go. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, according to the screenshots that posted on... Bra so, she posted it on her Instagram. How gross. Mm. Here's the world. Here's for the world. Let's right. all gang up on him. I want to hurt him. I want some attention. Now people know who I am. Because nobody knows who this person what is she a switch she's a surfer or something nobody knows who she is um and so he, he attempted to establish boundaries obviously he's in therapy with the guy who does the tools great book um and obviously he talked to his therapist about it. that's the only funny part about it is like <laughs> yeah. when you talk to a therapist and then you can hear like you can almost hear the session in the tweet right going my girlfriend's you know posting these pictures in her bathing suit with guys and it's making me insecure Jonah, just tell her, you know, tell her these are your boundaries. Just be honest about and then let her make the decision. And he just goes right to the text yeah. while he's in the office and goes, these are my boundaries. I just want you to know that I am uncomfortable with you being on Instagram in a swimsuit with um, other guys. This is my point. This, it, the Instagram, this regulates your nervous system. I know what you mean. Well, I kindly ask that you not comment on my body, good or bad. I want to politely let you know it's not helpful and doesn't feel uh, good. Much respect. Oh, is that what he's mm -hmm. saying when I said what I said? When people call him fat, yeah. Well, you're not fat anymore, so kudos, dude. And also, let's be honest, a little bit of that pressure that people said you were fat helped with you to get skinny. I mean, look at him now. Look how fucking hot you are now. Not hot. I mean, you still got a big head and you, you got small hands. But, you know, you're doing good. You got a cool-looking wife who you, who, who you don't want, uh, you know, talking to black eyes and taking pictures <laughs> with them. <laughs> this is his, um, what's that guy's name from the Clippers? The, 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 the owner of the Clippers who got caught. Oh, going, Donald Sterling. This is his Donald Sterling yeah. moment where he goes, listen, I just don't want you on Instagram. These are my limits. He yeah. goes, these are my limits. I don't want you taking pictures with black eyes. Big deal. <laughs> That's, by the way, when you know the poos poos is real good. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. is when it's got you all strung out like this. Yeah, yeah. When you're trying to control it. Yeah. When you're trying to lasso the poos poos, <laughs> you know you got a wild poos poos on your hands. <laughs> yeah. I've been in that situation uh, a few times. It never ends well. It never ends well. And it's always the best poos poos <laughs> that you try to lasso. The name of the episode will be Lassoing the Poos Poos. Lassoing Wild Poos Poos. <laughs> because whenever yeah. you find yourself, guys, trying to lasso Wild Poos Poos, you're in, you're in for trouble and you're in for a dysregulated nervous system. <laughs> that bitch is going to dysregulate your nerves. Whenever you find yourself talking to your therapist about your... Poos Poos's Instagram posts, <laughs> the war is lost. You know, that's the toughest when you when you meet a guy early in the battle and you're a wise veteran of war. Mm-hmm. You know, you're a general, you're an officer now, and you find a guy early in the battle and he comes to you and he goes, man, my look at my girl's Instagram posts are bothering me. You go, dog, retreat. <laughs> retreat. <laughs> and he's going, no, 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 no. I think I can win. I think I see them over the hill. Uh-huh. They don't have reinforcements. I don't think they got proper ammunition. I don't think they have the uh, artillery that we have. They don't have the intelligence we have. And you go, dog, 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 dog. <laughs> you go, dog, dog. You can only see 15 Chinese on the horizon, but there's a billion of them right in the canyon below, right behind with tanks and armor. Trust me, those sneaky Chinese are also underground. Retreat. Retreat back. <laughs> Punch out. Retreat back. We're only here to hold the line. We're not here to take territory. Leave it. <laughs> Leave that country alone. It's a sovereign nation. Leave it. Leave that. Leave the nation of Poos Poos <laughs> to its own government and people. Let them self-govern. Stop trying to incorporate them into your empire. It's over. <laughs> and you could tell she's hot. Yeah. She's a surfer. She's got a wild spirit. When you're going to date someone like this, it's just, you know, there's clues that they're not into family and they're not into stuff, you know? So you just go, they're not into like not being, lo- you know, there's certain girls are into being looked at by a lot of guys and there's clues. All right. Well, let me ask you a question. Is, are these boundaries acceptable, right? That she can't surf with men. Is that so too wait, so school? what does he say? This is what he says here. She alleged that Hill told her. That's he All alleged. Right, alleged. There you go. But she did post screenshots. So we yeah. got to see the screenshot. You got to find the screenshot right. for me. Um, she alleged said you can't surf with men. Now, that's a completely understandable boundary in my home country of Taliban occupied Afghanistan. <laughs> 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 but here's the deal. There's no problem with her surfing with guys. The problem is he knows that he's got wild poos poos that he's trying to lasso. That, that's what it is. That's yeah. what it is. He knows it's not that. <laughs> he's seen the way she reacted in restaurants to something else. Uh-huh. He's seen something else. He's insecure. He knows he's got. He's in over his head. The poos poos is too wild. He can't tame it. <laughs> only a, there's some poos poos that can only be tamed by a pimp. You know. Right. I'm t- I'm being serious. You know, pit like that, not an actual pimp, but, you know, a guy who has got that pimp mentality who doesn't get dysregulated by women because he can manipulate back, you know? Because sweet guys get... Oh, yeah. Sweet guys get torn up. You're going to get walked all over. You get walked all over. Did you find it? Yeah. Here Somewhere. We go. Here we go. All right. Let's see what it says. Okay. First of all, he goes plain and simple, which I like. That's lawyer speak. Mm-hmm. He's going, let's get to the facts here. Okay. We're in L.A. This is an L.A. relationship. I'm going to play a little hardball with you. I'm going to send you my terms for the contract, which have been vetted by my attorney and representatives. Plain and simple. This is a copy and paste from my attorney, sweetheart, in this Hollywood romance where we wore cheesy matching blazers and I have a fucking tattoo on my chest now to distract from the fact that I'm doing a lot with a little. That's a tattoos is a really good distractor when you got a little. Um, I recommend tattoos for average looking people. It really dresses it up. Glasses can help, beards help. 
These are things that really can help. Beards cover half your face. Glasses kind of throw people off, mm-hmm. make your nose look smaller. Tattoos make you look cooler, more dangerous, more free-spirited. There's a lot of stuff you can do. You can cut yourself while you're at a fashion show. Um, so he goes, if you need, plain and simple, if you need, here are my terms. Surfing with men. Boundaryless, boundaryless inappropriate friendships with men. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm with that. Boundaryless meaning like you, don't, you can't blow them, you can't hold hands with them, <laughs> and you can't be touchy-feely with them. There's no boundaries. This is kind of, this is like over therapy here. Mm-hmm. Uh, boy, this is like, this came straight from his therapist's office. Um, this is embarrassing. This is embarrassing for him. And this is embarrassing for her that she's like making this public. Just go fuck this guy and move on. You don't like it? Hey, guess what? You don't have to. Why is this like, uh, I'm like, oh my God, he had me in a prison. Oh my <laughs> God. This f- formerly fat. Uh, non-threatening uh, fucking Jewish actor who I could probably kick down a flight of stairs made me with my big strong surfer legs made me feel like a U- like a Ukrainian POW in Crimea <laughs> world please help <laughs> SOS send money Biden United States military industrial complex come to my aid because Jonah Hill sent me some therapy speak. <laughs> People are fucking, yeah. I mean, we're living in a fucking tra- tragic comedy. Good point. Surfing with men, boundaryless, inappropriate friendships with men, uh, to model, so he doesn't want her to model, to post pictures of yourself in a bathing so- suit, to post sexual pictures. Friendships with women who are in unstable places and from your wild recent past beyond getting a lunch or coffee or something respectful. <laughs> I am not the right partner. F- okay, so this is the honest part. Right. This is nothing wrong with this. The guy's in over his head with wild poos poos. <laughs> you can't throw a saddle on a wild horse, dog. And what happens is, is once you dip your fun stick in the fucking, in the hot sauce, baby. <laughs> The burning has begun. Uh-huh. Once you've jerked off, once you have choked your chicken, pulled your meat, disciplined your cock with vapes, vicar, vapor rub, it feels good the first for the first couple seconds until the heat kicks in. The heat has kicked in, Jonah. You have proverbially jerked off with Vicks vapor rub. <laughs> and then he goes, I'm not the right partner for you. If these things bring you a place of happiness, I support it, and there will be no hard feelings. These are my boundaries for romantic partnerships. My boundaries with you based on the way these actions have hurt our trust. Mm. That's open and honest communication, dog. That's all that is. He's setting his terms in a very Hollywood-like manner. (laughs) Yeah. And he is, let's be honest, he's Jonah Hill. Yeah. Yeah. He does a lot with a little, but also he's a fucking star. And you got to respect the star more than him than Brad Pitt because it's all based on talent and funny that he got where he got. The guy's talented. He's an incredible actor. Moneyball, he was incredible, okay? He was incredible in um, in um, the, the Wall Street movie. Wolf of Wall Street. Wolf, he was in all these movies. He's incredible. He's an incredible actor. He's gotten there through sheer talent, and he's also gotten to look like a cool dude from willpower and hard work. So Jonah Hill is an A-list star, my man. Oscar winner. Oscar winner, lady. Listen, listen, little surf. Little surfer, little girl. You're a fucking Venice Beach surfing hoe. Dating an A-list celeb who has some terms. Now, if you want to play in the big leagues, there ain't no boundaryless friendships with men. <laughs> Capiche? And if you don't like those terms, you can go back to hanging out with your fucking drug-addicted, loser, sun-baked surfer boys who drink on the beach and live that point-break life who fantasize about robbing banks and being chased by Keanu Reeves in Point Break. 
That's it. But here's Look the thing, her. though. Yeah. He probably had no problem with these posts before he was dating her. Well, that's not the problem. I mean, wh- whose lawyer are you? <laughs> you working for this broad or I'm just are you on team? He probably likes I'm it. I'm team Jonas, sweetheart. Listen, sweetheart. <laughs> I mean, no boundaryless posts. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. Look, if my wife started fucking having boundaryless relationships with men, I love that. Boundaryless <laughs> can mean anything. That's the part that's funny. That's the part where you go like, can you be a little more specific than boundaryless? Yeah. Can I say hello to them? Right. You know, it's just open to interpretation. Well, it's his interpretation. Yeah, that's what makes him look bad because he's just yeah. like boundaryless. It's like, hey, man, I just want complete control over you because I like that puss and you're beautiful <laughs> and I have some self-hate issues and I know I'm in over my head and I know you can leave me at any moment. It makes me insecure when better looking guys look at you. How do I stop this? How do you, why do I, st- why? and this is what happens. This is, that's what comes with America. You can become a Jonah Hill, a guy who should be just sitting in a rug store, (laughs) dealing with me haggling for a price on a Turkish rug. That's where he should be. That's where his genes are supposed to put him. That's why he has anxiety and he had to go to a therapist Uh because his genes want him there. The reason why my genes have me sometimes having anxiety is because I'm not supposed to be in front of a theater of people commanding them. I am supposed to be taking your order, asking if you want fries. <laughs> That's what my genes... Deluxe, deluxe. Yeah, I'm from a village, dog. <laughs> a generation ago, I was from a village, you know? I, you've given in to your genes. That's why I respect it. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're like, I want to just paint in a fucking... in an air conditionless <laughs> room. With ilk-minded people who are all hot with little fans on. <laughs> That's what our genes ask. So when we're, when we're trying to go beyond, we experience a little bit of anxiety because that's what comes with winning. With winning. Jonah Hill's winning, dog. He came here. He went beyond what his genes wanted, which for, was for him to sit in a rug store. And he became an A-list celebrity. And he's dating Poon Tang. Nobody in his line could ever get. From when we were amoebas to the time that amoeba became Jonah Hill, not one person in his chosen people tribe line dated anyone that looked like this broad. Well, let me take that back. She ain't that great. If I was up to her, I'd be say, I'd say yes, sir. (laughs) And I'm converting tomorrow. Baraka to Titan Al Khalil. Hey, boo. You're not going to get better than Jonah Hill. Funny, cool hair, and, and, isn't into boundaryless relationships. And rich. And rich. And famous. So that feels good. So I think what happened is, this is my take. And maybe I'm just siding with the guys and I'm a misogynist. You tell me in the comments, please, for engagement. Because uh, AI is a psychopath and that's all they care about, even if, you're, even if the engagement is insincere. This is my take. He left this broad. He got over her. He didn't, she didn't feel that he cared anymore sending her those texts or whatever. And he moved on because he's Jonah Hill and he's with another hotter chick. Because he's Jonah Hill. There's going to be another hotter chick. She got scorned. She got a taste. Because, what? listen, when everyone has the power, that's when people abuse it, you know? It takes a real philosopher poet to be humble when they have power. Because when you got power, you, you keep going, oh, I'm going to take more, I'm going to take more. And then when you lose that power, you go, oh, my God, I took it for granted. I missed that power. I was addicted to that power. How do I get it back? And then you can't, and so then you lash out. That's your last resort. This is a last resort to try to get some power back over Jonah Hill, and she ain't going to get it. Most people don't care about this. They read the text. That second paragraph is really, you know. And here's the thing. Most people got mad at Jonah Hill. I blame the attention span thing that we've been talking about, the dysregulated nervous system of social media, because they read that first paragraph, and those first couple lines do sound bad. But if you keep reading... The second paragraph goes, hey, take it or leave it. That's me. So, you know, people have the things that they like and they don't like, right? She likes surfing, for example. Some people like shellfish. Whatever it is, some people have shellfish allergies. They have to talk about their boundaries. Here's the contract. I'm an A-list movie star. No boundaryless relationships with guys, okay? Right? Now, maybe I'm defending Jonah Hill and maybe the next, if they were together a year, Maybe the next text is, here's my boundaries. You are no longer allowed to uh, not um, to wear your own hair. 
you're going to have to shave your head and put on a wig because I don't want any uh, men to be attracted to you. You're going to walk behind me so other men know that you belong to me. Are those, is this sort of in the same neighborhood as that? Is this the gateway drug to that? Uh, yes, probably. <laughs> Did those religious laws uh, grow from male insecurities like the ones we saw in those texts? Yes, that's how it starts. It starts with a powerful man who knows he's powerful going, I don't like you talking to guys. And then she goes, I'll talk to whoever I want. And he goes, ah, put this hat on. And then she talks to a guy in the hat. And he goes, here's the thing. I don't want you talking to guys with a hat on. And she goes, I'll talk to whomever I want. I've already compromised with you and put a hat on. So I did what you wanted. And he goes, ah, put this long sleeve shirt on. <laughs> And she talks to a guy with a long sleeve shirt. He goes, I don't want you talking to guys with long sleeve shirts. She goes, I'll talk to him whenever I want. I compromise. I put the hat and the long sleeve shirt on. He goes, cover your ankles, your feet, your legs. I want you wearing gloves. I want the only thing exposed is a slit for your eyes so you don't fall or bump into things. Do you understand? It's also going to be black. So I want you to sweat in the heat during summer so you think about the devil you are because you decided to eat an apple, okay, and listen to a snake. You're a demon from hell. You're under my control. You're my property. You will be a baby machine for me. I will be able to go out and get younger girls who won't be able to question it because if they do, I will smack them. Do you understand my boundaries? <laughs> That's where it ends. So is Jonah Hill's text... Where it starts, yes. But am I Jonah Hill's lawyer and PR representative in this scenario? Yes. So look, two things can be true. Jonah Hill's an insecure fat kid who's got a fat heart who's skinny, but deep down he still hates himself and he's dating a girl that's hotter and he's insecure about it. Uh-huh. True. <laughs> Is he trying to lasso wild puss puss because he knows he can't handle it? Uh-huh. True. He's dating out of his league and he knows it and he's worried about it. Aha, true. He should be with a girl named Jessica Rosenfarb who's a private school teacher at Brooklyn Friends. <laughs> and they celebrate matzah holidays and sitshiva together. That's what his gene says. But he goes and he gets this shfatsa, this Gentile, this Gentile pussy's no good. They tell you that's why we stay away from them. Stay out of the world, Jonah. They're no good. They're not chosen. And he finds himself in trouble. That part is true. But it is also true that it's pathetic for this chick to cry like she's a Ukrainian POW. So, in conclusion, why is this a story? It's a story... For these reasons, we live in a tragic comedy where all the gazettes, whatever, make fun of me for using an old-timey word, who post this story know that it's going to be a hot topic of fodder for people to tweet about, for podcasters to talk about and make jokes about. They know there's a market for it. The problem with news is it really can't be in the capitalist system. It really can't. There can't be a monetary... But then you go, hey, the innovation of that, I get that. I get that. But that leads to this, too. So what is the solution here? Because it does worry me when I say, hear politicians, fiery politicians go, you know, the problem is the dishonest media. You're like, oh, that's what Hitler said, too. So that worries me. Right? That's what all despots say. They shut down the media first. That worries me. But also, you can clearly see that the media is just running consequence-free. I mean, it couldn't be more obvious that they're just, they'll just say something and they go, whoops, and nobody, no consequences, nobody gets fired, and 
there's and nobody gets in trouble. Why? Because the 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 story, whether true or not, served the bottom served the bottom line well. A lot of people looked at that story, even if it was false. So that's why there's no consequences because they're not being punished by the market. So when you're in something where you're not being punished by the market, and the punishment by the market doesn't serve society, you have to step in and regulate. That's that's why libertarians are a joke to me, because not it's a joke. Because capitalism and the free market are about serving the bottom line. They're not about serving morality. And the bottom line doesn't naturally, organically support morality, right? People are complicated. They're greedy. And they want more. And they have complicated psychologies and histories and traumas and personalities and genetics. And it runs the gamut. And it's a big mess. So you need referees. You need laws. You need regulation. That's what you need. It should oscillate according to the times. Yes, but don't be a baby and give me this puritanical fucking political philosophy like you're a freshman in college just because you get a lot of dumb people to follow you on Twitter because they have high school educations and they think you're like their Jesus. Don't look at me with a straight face and say you're not a fucking charlatan. If you tell me you are in private, I'll respect you more. I'll go, hey, this shit's working, so I'm going to keep doing it. But don't look me in the eye and tell me it's true because I'm not an asshole. I'm not an asshole, so cut the fucking libertarian shit out. Of course Jeff Bezos is a fucking libertarian. Would you be a libertarian if you were a greedy fucking moralist fucking one-eyed businessman who makes people pee in a cup so they keep working on minimum wage to pad his fucking bottom line so he can shoot steroids in his ass and bang a fucking hot news anchor? Yeah, that would be my favorite political philosophy too. Why? Because it serves me best. I don't want the government saying I can't do things. These are my slaves. Now pick up the package, slave, and fucking send it. And if you can't send it on time, I'll put it in a fucking drone and fire you. Because I got, I need to shoot testosterone in my ass in my, on my boat in Miami. Same thing with communists and objectivists and, you know, laissez-faire capitalists and uh, democratic socialists. <laughs> Whatever your thing is, acknowledge the other side has some points and talk it out, negotiate. Everyone leaves miserable, you know? But, the, you know, it's like a good business deal. Both people know the other side has a point. They know that they want it. They know that they want it. And it's like, I could see in your shoes. And, you know, that's what, that's what makes a hard business deal. If I was in your shoes, I'd be doing the same thing. I get it. And then you, you make a deal. And just say everyone acknowledge that everyone's just out there for their own self-interest. Stop, stop. Can people stop pretending like they're Superman and Batman? You know? This bitch. I'm a hero. No, you're not. You're, you're a shameless dummy. You know? If people could just start in, a, a, acknowledging their humanity, their flaws, their greed, their, their fungus, that they're dirty fungus on a rock floating in nothing, like little mice trying to get more cheese, it would be an easier world. People would have a better sense of humor. Because what's happened now is everyone is starting to believe their own bullshit. They're starting to believe they're the avatar they created. They're starting to believe that they are the curated version of themselves that they put forth on their social media platforms, which are uh, filtered and, uh, you know, culled perfectly to present only the highlights. They're exaggerated, full of hyperbole. This is all for you, Sebastian. Big words. <laughs> And people are starting to believe that they are those people and other people believe that those people are those people and that makes them feel bad about themselves when really it's a lie. I know all those people. I've met the best-looking people. I've met stars. They're riddled with anxiety. They're worried about somebody else. They got an ax to grind. They're unhappy just like you. They're, they're struggling to stay fit. They're struggling to find happiness and purpose just like you. So don't buy the bullshit unless you want to because guess what? Bullshit is entertaining, so I can't knock it, sweetheart. But just know there's consequences that come when you buy the bullshit. When you buy the bullshit, it means now you got to live with bullshit. And bullshit smells, and it's in your house. And at some point, you got to take it out of the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a Giannis Pappas Hour. 
Uh, I enjoyed this episode. I really did. Patreon.com slash Giannis Papasauer for bonus episodes. Please join. It's $5 a month. You get the audio and video of both episodes. And all things comedy. Um, I would like to make a promo video for that. We'll do that afterwards. But um, now let's go to some of our uh, coveted and appreciated small business sponsors. Guys, want to give a small business shout out. Support these guys. Brooklyn Cannery. All, all natural sodas, no added sugar, low in calories, natural sweeteners like stevia, monk fruit, incredible. Calories for ginger beer like 22, cola amaretto, I think the calories are like 42, root beer like 32, 42, something like that. Key lime jalapeno, these are my four favorite flavors. They have other flavors too, they have a coffee spritzer as well. It's a mom and pop shop. Uh, don't just, if you like soda, drink these so you don't get diabetes. It's simple, dog. It's 2023. You don't have to be manipulated by sprite commercials anymore it's like just get with it uh brooklyncannery.com order a case to your house put them in your basement freezer and uh Giannis pappas all one word for 15 percent off your order love you guys matcha and brewski or whatever their names are jared knows their names i can't remember them uh jared z uh this is exclusive autoshipping.com you buy a car out of state you're on carfax or whatever you buy a car you need it shipped you hit up exclusive autoshipping.com They'll ship it for you, or if you're moving, they'll ship it for you, and they'll give you a free quote if you call them. Go to their website, ExclusiveAutoShipping.com. Student and military discounts apply. Manetti, financial services, South Jersey, Philly, Wawa's <laughs> parking lots is where my office is. 215-750-3730. Call me from your home phone and get a cuke. No social media, old school, baby. The IRS can't track nothing. Give Chris Minetti a call, 215-750-3730, and say, how you doing, and bring him some pastries. For the free dot art, there's music in Hawaii, and uh, you got to check it out. Uh, Sporthorseferrier.com, 864-200-9007. The town is Nashville. The person is Sam Gubera. The occupation is farrier. What is farrier? Farrier is a podiatrist for horses. Someone who cleans hoofs. She'll fix your hoofs. She's got 10 years of experience doing this because her daddy brought her up on a farm. Because she's a, <laughs> because she's a, she's a redneck from, Tex, from, from Nashville. And she grew up on a farm. So when she's not checking out Nate Bargatze comedy clips, she's shaving down the hoofs of horses. We got a huge horse, horse owning <laughs> listenership in Nashville. So I want you guys to know. And I want you to know 80% of equine lameness is hoof related. I want you to know that. <laughs> if, you're, if your horse, if you fuck, if you, if you steer, is you steer? I don't know. That's a, that's a cow. Let you know I'm a city boy. <laughs> if your horse is acting fucking like it's got low test, it's still lazy, it's acting like it's got sleep apnea, not moving around a lot, you go, why are you tired during the day? 80% of that, 80% of the time that happens, it's going to be because your hoofs hurt. Okay, that's where Sam Gobert comes in <laughs> and changes his shoes. <laughs> so if you need a farrier with no fumare and over 10 years of experience... <laughs> And you're in the Nashville area. She's got a lot of requirements uh, that need to happen for you to do business. She's like Jonah Hill. If you have a horse, if you're a multimillionaire, <laughs> if you live in Nashville, if you don't like your farrier, <laughs> if your horse is, has equine laziness, then and only then call 864-200-9007 or visit sporthorsefarrier.com. Please, more sponsors <laughs> like this that I can have fun with every week. Thank you, Sam Gubera. Sam Gubera looks like an extra on Yellowstone. <laughs> she looks like she's living in the bunk. Manly Girly Studios. Um, our favorite failed conglomerate. <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. You guys are fucking crushing it, dog. Manly Girly Studios. Get 40% 40, 40 off your first studio recording at their studio in North Carolina by referencing this ad. So if you want to start a podcast, just do it. Do it from, at this point, it should be hobby podcasting. Mm -hmm. Like people can sit yeah. around with their boys and like, hey, let's have a good time. And like, we like books, so let's talk about books. Maybe people will listen to it. They probably won't. But we had a good time, you know? 
Um, so check out their comedy podcast also. Manly Girly Studios. Um, they got a new they they got new podcasts. You go find them. All you got to do is go to manlygirlystudios.com or check them out on YouTube. These guys are great. Um, displaypros.net. You setting up a booth, right? Mm-hmm. At a at a convention. Yep. That's when you use these guys. Absolutely. So they got everything you need. Displaypros.net. Use the coupon code. What's the deal is for ten percent off your first purchase, or just tell them Yanni sent you. They'll build you a booth. They'll build you stuff. They'll build you a sign. Um, displaypros.net. You need to display anything. Mm-hmm. You got a store, whatever sign. Displaypros.net will hook up your business, whatever you need. Um, Staffing Beaver. These are the types of guys we need in here. <laughs> and then the insurance guy, I hope, is still here. Staffing Beaver, okay? Now, that doesn't mean that this guy's racking up a bunch of beaver in his crib and, and, and poking each one. No, 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 no. He is, he's getting you employees for your business who could live anywhere um, so you could save cost. I'll just say it that way. Okay, um, you, he finds your talent offshore, basically. All right, I'm looking. I've been looking at the wrong camera the whole time, which is funny. We're gonna keep it. Um, <laughs> I'm used to looking at there, and I'm looking there. So, if you need to hire a bookkeeper, customer service rep, data entry specialist, graphic designer, inbound call expert, outbound call expert, you name it, go to staffingbeaver.com. Schedule a discovery call with Rob. That's it. His name's Rob. Uh, mention Yanni sent you. You get 10% off your first placement fee. If you don't have office space, no supplies, don't worry about it. Global talent is the hack to grow your business faster. And make sure to follow them on Twitter at Staffing Beaver. All one word. Uh, for You know, the funny thing is talent is, you know, slang for chicks. And his it's called Staffing Beaver. So, dog, when this business fails, keep the LLC and start a fucking cam girl business to get your Bugatti. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. Ah, this guy's still with us. I thank you. Matthew Albani has an insurance company from his fucking mom's basement. <laughs> he you, He's just taking your money. I don't know if he's licensed to cover you for anything. Have we looked up this company? It doesn't matter. I'm not subject to FCC regulations. I can sell garbage to you. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course, because MA Insurance, Ma Insurance, Ma Insurance Services, is legit, dog. You, a lot of people they watch these commercials, they go, "Oh my God, I got to go with Farm Stand, or I got to go Farm with Stand. Grove Brook, <laughs> Grove Brook, or I got to go. I don't want to get sued, or I got to go with you know they always got a name uh, like that, Grove yeah, Brook or yeah. Free Stand, Dico. or yeah, or Dyko Hamel, <laughs> or you know." I, no, no, you got to go with Ma. Who loves you like your Ma? This guy's marketing is on point, all right? Ma, Ma Insurance Services. Who helps you more, Grovestone or when you go, Ma, I hurt myself. <laughs> Grovestone's not coming. Ma's going to come. So MaInsuranceServices.com. Guess what? In the St. Petersburg, Florida area, where a lot of people are doing business. So hit up Matthew Albani at MaInsuranceServices.com. They will help with a wide range of commercial insurance policies, including workers' compensation, commercial property, auto, professional liability, general liability, and umbrellas. Ma Insurance Services is a local, independent agency located in St. Petersburg, Florida, so you can be sure that you're getting personalized service (laughs) that you just can't get with the larger agencies nowadays. I mean, Matthew calls you personally and checks on you. He becomes your friend. He plays video games with you. (laughs) (laughs) Also, you can give them a call at, scroll over that way, 813. No, push it the other way. Push it the other way. What are you talking about? That side. Right there. 813. You got me. You're right. I was looking over there. 813-260-0338. Or you could just go to your local... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Maybe bleep that. <laughs> All right, that's it. That's it. Yeah, bleep it. 